We gave £100 each to two chefs to kit out a kitchen completely empty except for an oven and a hob. We're going to compare what they both bought and we're going to get them to use their new equipment by cooking us up some food. Boys, lots of lovely equipment. Very shiny. Yeah, Ebers, why don't you talk us through how you shopped and the logic behind it? So for me, it was less about the what and more about the where first. So I started in charity shops. You're supporting a charity, which is great, but there is no guarantee of finding anything of use because they don't carry a set inventory. But it looks so like So I got right. some interesting stuff. Then I spent a big chunk of my budget on a big piece of wood. Two pans and a tray that will last a long time. And then I fleshed out the rest of my budget with bits and pieces that I think you need because you can't get away with not having them. Kush, how about you, mate? I made a XR spreadsheet, uh, basically a glorified list. Then I uh, walked four and a half kilometers just trying to find the cheapest of the cheap. Because I thought, let's get as everything you might need for the first six months to a year. And if you don't use it, that's fine. If you use it loads and you break it, buy a new one and get a better one next time. A lot of this was nearly free. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Do you want to get cooking and then you can talk us through the individual items and the purchases and what? Yep, sounds like a plan. I'm attempting a one tray wonder, a bake, a sandwich and a soup. All to show off and we justify got... your purchases. Essentially, yeah. Like with minimal, very inexpensive, slightly flexible equipment <laughs> and correct shopping and sharing you can get away with doing some decent murder. food on a budget. Yeah. Murder. You can get away with murder. Get away with murder. Initially, yes. you've both gone for knives. Yes. I went for a set of six knives with knife covers, because I'm assuming if it's an empty apartment, you wouldn't have a knife block. And if you buy a knife and you put it in a drawer, it'll go blunt. So knife, knife cover, wash it, put it back in, throw it in a drawer, it won't go blunt. Or carry it around the house, you know, if you want to stand two here. <laughs> He's got a slicer. already. Never know when a knife comes in handy. There is a reason they don't let you in airports. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting you've chosen to start with the knives, because I reckon it might be one of my only regrets. It was an online purchase, because I really wanted was two knives, a small serrated knife, and a larger chef's knife. It's a six Did you inch... think it was bigger? It's a six inch knife. Okay. Not a six inch blade. Correct. Oh, oh wow. wow! And the photos are quite deceptive. <laughs> But really, I only wanted those two, and I thought, do you know what? A little paring knife is a bonus, but I promise you, you'll be able to do 99% of jobs with these two. I've gone for a slightly different approach to Kush. I'm just doing a simple midweek meal, because I figured if you're starting in a new flat with basic equipment, less is more when it comes to food as well, but it doesn't mean we have to hold back on flavor. So this is a beef and aubergine one tray bake on a pea polenta. So we're getting a uh, pizza gnocchi lasagna tray bake on the go with a base of onions and garlic sweating off in some oil. Half of that's going to go into my lovely little aluminium walnut handle saucepan uh, to make a Ben's favourite seasonal soup. A bit of watercress, twisting up some pork belly. I'm going to do a quick fried rice with the pork belly on top, some stir fried mushrooms. Oh, and a uh, southern fried chicken sandwich. Of course you are. Hello. And Ballpark figure, how much did that knife set cost you? Uh, so six knives with their sheaths uh, was, uh, if you can believe it, £9.89. No way. But it sounds like you've both taken the approach to shop around. So at no point does this task feel like it was convenient for either of you. Like in order to make it stretch, you had to work for it. Yeah, and I think that applies to so many things. Cheaper cuts of meat normally need a bit more time or effort to long, slow cooks and things like that. And I think here, if you're working to a tighter budget, you do need to be a little bit more prepared to think around, shop around, not rely on too many delivery costs, but actually walk to places and get them yourself. Can a poor quality knife be really detrimental? To your cooking? Yeah. Yeah, it won't keep its edge. It'll be hard to use. And you'll find that you're putting in too much effort to chop your fruit and veg. So if you're putting loads of effort into cutting a vegetable and you slip, all that effort is going into your finger where if you use a sharp knife, less effort, little nick. I decided I was going to go big on my board. Yeah, why is that? Yeah. And this is a pretty good board. It, it literally locks into the, the unit, or you can turn it over and you've got the divots. And I thought that gives you loads of prep control. 
So rather than need for lots of little bowls and prep, if you're doing lots of things that need mise en place, you just move it to corners of the board and you've got lots of space to work with. What about you, Kush? You've gone for a slightly smaller affair. I've gone for a slightly smaller board because I'd rather have two or three. Because if I'm going to cut chicken, I want that chicken to be on a separate board that I can pick up and scrub in the sink. My second logic was buy all of the equipment that it is really difficult to replicate. Weighing is kind of key. So I bought a very, very cheap set of scales and it will get me through the first few months in the kitchen. Because for this recipe, I need a weight of polenta and a weight of milk. Uh, I, on the other hand, need to measure some tempura batter uh, for my chicken. And I know that a tub of chicken stock is 500 millilitres. So I will just fill that up with water and that is 500 millilitres. And then I put that through the dishwasher and keep that and you've got endless storage tubs. I feel like he's been a bit sneaky with some of his ingredients. What do you season you'll mix with? Just salt. Salt. Any pepper? Oregano, tomato pe paste, honey. No pepper? No pepper. No black pepper? I bought <laughs> peppercorns in a mill because it's an ingredient, but it comes with the mill for free. I think he's thought about this a lot more than you did. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I rocked up with a few things under my arm this morning. <laughs> So let's talk pans. Kush, what was your approach? Did you go expensive, stuff the last? Did you go variety? So I went as cheap as possible for the pan that all I'm gonna do is boil stuff in it. It's got a heat proof handle and it will boil liquids quickly. And you'll only ever boil, boil stuff. stuff in it. Yes, because I also bought a slightly heavier based, non-stick stock pot casserole style dish for stews, slow cooks, quick ragouts like this that I'm gonna pour over my gnocchi and put it into the oven. And then I spent the most money on pans on a eh, relatively heavy, but not oven safe, non-stick frying pan. Non-stick pans are cheaper because the consumers want them, so they flood the market with non-stick pans. So the not non-stick, the stainless steel equivalent of that, is four times the price. Two approaches to pans. One, I walked into the charity shops first, and I thought if there's any pans, rule of thumb, more durable items, they tend to be older items that have probably been handed down through a generation or have come from old people who died. Dead people's flats. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> so I picked up a small saucepan with lid, perfect for two portions of anything you're cooking midweek. And I've gone for the non-stick because that's not something I would get searingly hot, but it's good for scrambled eggs. It is good for wet and watery things. And then I went for a big thing, a 365 pan from Ikea. Big fan of this range, so big in fact, that it's the pans that we started using yeah. on the channel 13, yeah. 13 years, years ago. Nothing ever sticks to it. If it does, you can scrub it. It's durable, it will go in the oven, and I spent 15% of my budget on it. And he's a whole block of mozzarella. <laughs> he's taken this brief so differently for to Evers. Yeah. So I'm laying my mozzarella on my toasted ciabatta, slow toasted. Right, back to pans. I also went for one big frying pan. Oven proof, and when I pick a pan, I like a pan with a, a side edge because then you can saute in it better. And because it's oven proof, you can also do all sorts of bakes and things in that too. So I wanted the stick blender that had uh, the little food chopper attachment on the bottom. So I use one of those at home every time I cook. Uh, I ordered it, it didn't turn up. So I had to run out earlier and buy this one. The same price, but without the little choppy patch. That would have done all of my chopping on my spring onions, my garlic, everything else. Where are you going to use this now? I'm going to make mayonnaise with it. I'm going to blend a soup with it. So I'm making tempura batter. I've weighed my 500 millilitres of liquid because it says 500 on the side of it. So what's that, sparkling water? Uh, no, just uh, London tap water. Uh, got some tempura mix. I bought a whisk. Oh, interesting. We've had lots of conversations about whisk. The kind of things that you might need a whisk for, you can probably get away with like a fork, unless you're doing things like whipping cream or meringues. And if you're looking at trying to make like lump-free sauces, change the method and use a wooden spoon. Never had lumpy bechamel. You don't need a whisk for it. Hey, but it looks like you got a box grater. I couldn't afford the whole box. It's got a full no. So I just got one quarter of a box grater. <laughs> I just got a quarter of a box grater. So I think this is a perhaps better example of something that is difficult to find an alternative for. You could just peel and then chop and get things smaller. But for me, spending money on this means I can get finely grated Parmesan, chunkier grated cheese, and it does potato slices mottled or otherwise. Very oh, similar. Look. Oh, look Great at this. Lines. Okay, we found, our, we found one that they've agreed on. Got some chicken thighs, togarashi, sweet soy sauce, and I'm just using the tray that I came in because I couldn't afford another mixing bowl. I was thinking I probably need some form of mixing bowl in my equipment. That said, if you're just cooking for small groups, cereal bowls, which we've already said you probably have crockery, 
are perfectly okay. But then I walked into the charity shop and they had six Balti dishes for four quid. And I thought, do you know what? <laughs> Brilliant. Serving dishes. Serving dishes, small mixing bowls. They can go in the oven and get really hot. You could cook on a hob with them and heat things up. So they're kind of more versatile. And I thought they're an absolute bargain at six for four pounds. Another example that's quite difficult, if you do want to peel things, yes, you can do it with a paring knife. I got given one of those as my set of three. But you need quite a lot of patience. You have to be quite careful, um, a little bit of expertise to get that right. One of those things I think you almost can't live without is a peeler. You will use it for so many different things. Charred my pork belly off, or, you know, roasted it, got some fat out of it, glazed it with oyster sauce, sweet soy, Sichuan peppercorn powder, fire spice, as you would. Then into the same pig fat, gone with uh, crispy uh, garlic, some pre-cooked short, short grain rice from the Korean supermarket, uh, some pak choy, bamboo shoots, a whole load of pre-roasted and pickled uh, chilies that I, no, not chilies, mushrooms. Oh, I think oh, are amazing. Yeah. Pickled mushrooms. Uh, and just all the deliciousness, and that'll now just, that's ready. I'm making garlic mayo. So we've seen this before, the pull through method. Out of everything that the two of you have bought, Yes. Is there any place that you feel like you're making do? This and this follow the same two logics, which is 90% of the tins we buy now have ring pull on it. So actually, you probably don't need one. But on the occasion you get a tin that hasn't, you absolutely need yeah. one. So what I've gone for is you can't live without one, but you don't need to spend much money because you so rarely use it, you'll make do. <laughs> We've we found a regret purchase <laughs> on the peeler. Oh, wow. Oh. No, it's a serrated pe I'm going to grate my carrot instead. We need to tell Kush that all of his hobs are on. Yeah, so I'm balancing the oil across these two because I got a bit hot, so I cooled it out with more oil. That is staying hot uh, for a fried egg later to top the rice because everyone likes a fried egg. So imagine you've just moved into a new flat and you haven't got much equipment and somebody buys you a nice housewarming gift. Bottle of wine, it's got a cork, you need to be able to get into it, even with a really cheap, this is really rubbish, <laughs> really cheap <laughs> NAF corkscrew. And is that called a waiter's friend, that? No, so this would be a waiter's nightmare. Right. This right. is called a waiter's friend, uh, 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 and uh, I would suggest one of those. So you've both got a selection of spoons, different materials. Talk us through your logic, Kush. Uh, because I bought two non-stick pans, I didn't want any metal utensils, so I didn't buy any. I managed to get uh, four bamboo spoon style implements in a piece of bamboo with drainage holes. Oh, uh, hello. For two pounds. Oh. Hmm? Two pound fifty. Was it two pound fifty? Yeah, I saw your label earlier. I thought that's a bargain because oh. I spent about that on each one. What are the limitations or, or positive things of bamboo? Positives. Uh, bamboo is really quick growing, so it's a sustainable um, wood in effect. Um, you can whittle it into many different shapes. It's quite nice to hold, it's quite easy to clean. Uh, it's really cheap. Uh, I'm gonna deep fry some chicken, but I don't have my trusty temperature probe. So how do I know that oil is hot enough? Put a wooden spoon in it. It's a little wooden spoon in it. If and it if bubbles. It, if it bubbles, it's ready. I've got a very cheap metal large spoon, a serving spoon, a slotted spoon, which is really good if you're doing things like poached eggs and stuff. Again, more difficult to do it without a slotted spoon. In buying that, I got given one of those free. I'll probably never use it. It came as a set of three. Mm. But do, why, why would you not use a spatula? I use that all the time. Yeah. I just find them fiddly, which is why I prefer tongs. So I definitely bought a pair of tongs. Make sure that they've got really good purchase at the end, because essentially that is your opposing thumb. And finally, a wooden spoon, which is my cheapest purchase of all and will last for a decade. I've done all of my chopping, so I'm now using my chopping board as a tray slash Matt, and I'm, I bought this. What? So that is a, a drainer. Call them spiders in kitchens. But I've never great. felt the need for one of those at home. It, uh, it was so inexpensive, uh, and I knew that I wanted to do some deep frying. It was a no-brainer. Ah, I'm going to use this colander as a bowl. And I've run out of my chopping board, so I'm just going to use this really sharp knife to cut my tomatoes in half. Uh, so we've got fried chicken mayo. Uh, should we go Italian? Well, is it, why See, not? Let's start. Oh, basil and tomatoes. I've just changed the dish. So we've got... See, okay. when I do this, I just... Yeah, I get people shouting at You change the dish for the worse.
I weighed my polenta out into my bucket bowl and now I'm stirring it into my garlic infused milk on the basis that I haven't got a whisk and this will do. It'll end up lump free. I'm so, I really tried to listen to that Ben, but I'll do. Kush has just served up a loaf of bread <laughs> with chicken in it. That's a chicken sandwich. It is. That is a uh, gnocchi pizza lasagna. Uh, I'm going to utilise this uh, uh, fried onion container as a mixing bowl, because I've run out of mixing bowls. Bit of red wine, black pepper, some salt, and then I'll mixy mixy and slap it on top with some uh, basil. Another advantage of big chopping boards is the ability in kitchens to put hot things down on them. Personally, I hate plastic chopping boards. I think they damage knives, they're not great and to use, and not very comfortable to use, but also you can't put hot things on them. So a big chopping board, wooden one, doubles up as a heat stand as well. So I heated up some milk in my pan, infused with garlic, quickly cooked polenta in it, finished it off with parmesan and then peas, went in frozen so they're just defrosted so you've got kind of pea fleck all the way through it. And then I'm gonna serve that with this oregano tomato, beef, aubergine, and spring onion mix on top, and a dollop of yogurt. Oh, lovely. I don't want any food waste, and I want to bring a bit of more freshness back to this dish, so I'm utilising the rest of the pickles, some raw bean sprouts in, and some sweet soy sauce. So in terms of baking trays or roasting tins, I deliberately bought one deep one, because you can slow cook and stew things in it as well but it's also really sturdy and durable. But I then also did buy one flat baking tray for grilling things, roasting vegetables, we want larger surface area, and that was cheaper, but it's still strong enough that it's not like gonna fold in on itself. So it's enough. We're gonna reveal what each of these guys spent from their 100 pound budget at the very end. And I am buzzing for that. How did you find working with a 100 pound budget, honestly? A little bit of jiggery pokery. So there are places where we've cut corners, but you're thinking within a budget for today, all of this stuff works. It's remarkable how much you can cook with a chopping board and knife and one pan. You don't need to start out with 17 items. How about you, Kush? Did you find it frustrating? Did you find it liberating? I would have preferred less money, which would have then focused my path down one area of food. I would have bought like four things and cooked one dish. Is everyone done? Yep. I think so. Wow. What uh, a great video. There is incredible. some amazing food to tuck into. Uh, and while we do so, why don't we talk about your summary of thoughts and find out your final prices. Yeah. Right, let's get in here. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's unnecessary, mm. but it doesn't mean it's wrong. No, oh. <laughs> no. Mm. That's my approach to food as well. Mm. That is phenomenal. As an exercise, I mean, that was fascinating for us to stand on the side. But have you drawn any sort of conclusions from the challenge and perhaps some advice that you think, or some rules that you could pass on to people watching when it comes to buying equipment? For me, if you've got a hundred pounds, go out, spend 50, test the stuff, go back, spend another 10 if you need to. Mine was more about the order of where I shop first. So starting in charity shops, you might find some hidden gems that are really cheap and useful. Secondly, I spent a big chunk in Ikea on stuff that I knew will last. And that equipment that you bought, how long do you reckon that will generally last you? Depends how you cook, how often you cook. And how you look after it when you do cook. Yeah. What you cook as well. Question on my lips. I don't know about your lips, Jay. How much did each of you spend in total? 99 pounds and 73 pence. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Kush? Uh, 99 pounds and 63 pence. Oh! So you I maximised spent... your budget. Yeah. And I think you're right. In hindsight, there might have been one or two changes here or there. But on the whole, some pretty sound choices. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's over to you in the comments down below. Let us know what is the number one thing in your kitchen that you cannot live without. And if you'd like us to do this again with our chefs, but with a different budget, give the video a like and let us know in the comments.